Welcome back to another episode of Offbeat Adventures. We're standing here on the grade of the former Grand Trunk Pacific Railway and later Canadian National Railway's Graham subdivision. We are just on the western outskirts of the city of Thunder Bay. Um, right in front of us is a very well-known road called Maple Ward Road that kind of runs north and south. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be exploring the grade in this area uh, and a very, very unique feature known as the Moose's Nose or the Devil's Elbow. Uh, so we're looking uh, back to the west, I guess. The, the railway kind of makes a loop to the east here. You can see the grade in front of me here. I don't know how well you can make it out on the camera, but basically there's a, there's a stop sign indicator uh, right there and just beside it is the grade that kind of goes back towards the southwest. Um, you'll notice uh, there is a gate in front of us. Uh, we are right now on private property uh, and so I did have to get permission uh, to uh, to explore in this area. So the southern part of this moose's nose is private property. The northern side uh, is uh, is property of the city. Uh, our first feature is actually right in this area here. You can see all of this concrete that's kind of scattered all over the place here uh, and sadly um, that concrete uh, is the remnants of a culvert uh, you can see that there's a little creek here uh, that kind of flows through i don't know where the uh, um, where the replacement culvert is but this was ripped out um, and it was actually a concrete culvert that was put in in 1917 and we're going to be taking a look at a very very similar one just further up here um, so this hike is gonna take us through about three miles, uh, right from Maple Ward Road, right back to Maple Ward Road. Uh, we're actually gonna do this in two sections. Uh, so we're gonna do the southern part today, uh, and then we're gonna do the northern part of the nose um, on another day later in the spring. And the reason why we're gonna do that uh, is simply because um, the northern part has a lot of rock cuts and it's gonna take some time for all the snow and the ice in there to melt. It is the 15th of March. Uh, this is one of our earliest hikes that we've, uh, that we've ever done. Just keeping an eye when that culvert's coming up. Um, so anyway, uh, we should start with our history lesson right up the hop because then I have to do some explaining uh, about this moose's nose feature. Uh, here's the culvert right here. So this is where all the concrete came from. I gotta to remember to mark that on the GPS. So there's basically two culverts side by side because the other one's just up ahead. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, this line was constructed by um, Canadian, sorry, not Canadian, wrong railway line, by the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. Uh, it was going to be um, uh, an attempt by the Grand Trunk Company, which was basically the oldest railway company in Canada, had, had gotten its start way back in um, 1852. Well, so it was going to be an attempt by the Grand Trunk Company to build a second transcontinental line. Um, now, they didn't want to build this by themselves, so what they did was they, uh, they partnered with the, uh, with the Canadian government. And so, and this, the planning had this gone on for years and years and years. So it took a long time for it to get built. So the plan was for the Grand Trunk Company to build the western portion of this transcontinental line, everything from uh, Winnipeg to the west, to the, the coast of uh, uh, British Columbia, uh, under the name the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. And then the Canadian government was going to build everything to the east uh, under the name um, the National Transcontinental Railway. Where is this? Uh, Where's this culvert here? There it is. Um, so we'll do our history lesson and then we're gonna drop down and go take a look at this. Um, so anyway, so it took some time for this all to get sorted out. Uh, this line was actually the first piece of that railway line uh, that was going to be constructed. And so um, basically construction started here in 1905. Uh, the Prime Minister at the time, so Wilfrid Laurier came to do the sod turning. So they started construction in 1905 and the line was completed by 1908. Now, unfortunately what happened uh, was the arrangement between Grand Trunk and the Canadian government 
um, to for Grand Trunk to operate the eastern portion uh, that ran from Winnipeg to New Brunswick, the NTR, that fell through. So what had to happen was the Canadian government had to take over that rail line. And so um, they um, changed the name and they called it the Canadian Government Railways. Now, this line was a bit of an anomaly because it was a Grand Trunk line, but it actually connected to the NTR. Because remember, everything east of Winnipeg was NTR. So when the NTR became the Canadian Government Railways, uh, what happened was is Grand Trunk, uh, sorry, the, the Canadian Government Railways leased this line from the Grand Trunk. So its name changed. Uh, and I have to make up these cards. <laughs> I had to make up a bunch of these cards because I can't remember. There's so many name changes with this line. So originally it was the Lake Superior Division of the Grand Trunk Pacific. Uh, in 1915, it became uh, the Fort William subdivision uh, of the Canadian Government Railways. The line was split into two, the Fort William and the Wraith subdivisions. Uh, and so the Canadian Government Railways uh, operated for uh, about four years until the Gov Canadian Government Railways was folded into the newly created uh, Canadian National Railways. Um, and the Canadian National Railways was basically a, a, an amalgamation of the Canadian Government Railways and Canadian Northern. Um, and it was during the Canadian Government Railways time that a lot of these upgrades were done, including this culvert that we're going to be taking a look at in a second. Um, and so in 1919, when Canadian National took over, the name of this line changed. Uh, so initially, it was the Fort William and Wraith subdivisions. Uh, and then later that year, 1919, it became the Lake Superior Subdivision. And it continued like that until 1923 when the name changed yet again. Uh, so in 1923, it became the Canadian National Railway's Graham Subdivision, which most people kind of know it as. Uh, and then in 1924, it was split again. Um, and basically, it was split into the... Um, Crest and Graham subdivision. So this part became the Crest subdivision uh, and it basically had to do with the rationalization uh, of all of the uh, of all of the lines in the area and in 1925 the lines were split again So they became the Crest, Wraith and Quorn subdivisions uh, And it was in 1925 that this line was abandoned and so basically CN was going to use the Canadian Northern Line going to the uh, to the east, uh, to the west, the Kashibawi subdivision to get to the rest of um, this line um, um, near a place today called Sistadin's Corner. Uh, and so this line continued um, uh, to operate. So in 1926, they dropped the Crest subdivision. So it was just the Wraith and the Corn subdivisions. And then in 1931, it reverted back to being called the Graham subdivision. And the line continued to operate until 1994 uh, when it was abandoned by the, uh, by the government. So let's, uh, let's hop down. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this here. Because uh, again, it's early and there's a lot of ice and snow. And uh, so we're going to drop down and take a look at this really, really interesting culvert. Okay, so we're here uh, having a much closer look at the culvert. Uh, I am perched precariously uh, on these uh, beaver works here. So um, you can see the date stamp uh, on the culvert and I'm zooming in here with my phone so you can see it a little bit better. And so again, these, uh, these culverts, and there are three of them in this area, were built during the um, Canadian Government Railways era. So from 1915 until 1919. Um, and it was all part of a plan by the Canadian Government Railways to do some upgrades on this line. Uh, there are several of these culverts, like I said, there's three in this area. Uh, there's another one that is way to the west by Ellis, which is quite large because it runs under a section of the grade which is uh, like 60 feet down. So it's, uh, it's huge. There is another one uh, just to the east of here. So this creek here is a branch of um, the Nebing River. And so the Nebing River is one of the bigger uh, rivers in the area. So this flows uh, to the south and then um, flows into the Nebing River. Nebing River, uh, Nebing is the Ojibwe word for um, summer. So there is a larger one to the south uh, as it crosses Nebing River. I, 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 I've heard of it. I, I've seen some photographs of it. It's absolutely huge. I do want to go see it. Unfortunately, just like this section here, it is on private property. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to ever get access to it. Uh, but for in the meantime, we're going to have to sort of make do with uh, uh, with uh, with this one 
Uh, you can see the water is quite high uh, because of the, uh, the spring runoff. We got some rain last week, so I'm sure that kind of boosted everything up. But uh, what we're gonna do is we'll, uh, we'll jump the grade and go take a look at the other side. Okay, so we've moved our way over here to the, uh, to the north side of the grade. Uh, this is about as close as we can get. When I was here four years ago, there wasn't all of this, uh, these beaver works here. And so the water level wasn't as high. And so I could, I could actually move right into the, uh, right into the culvert. So I'll try to get as close as I can. You can see that uh, very good, uh, very good date stamp on there. So again, uh, really, really neat to see this. Uh, it's very unfortunate that the other one was uh, was pulled out. I'm not sure why, maybe there was some sort of failure in it and they had to rip it out and replace it with a modern culvert. But uh, again, it was really neat to see these, uh, these culverts on this section and it's a great little legacy of this railway line. Okay, so let's uh, leave the uh, concrete culvert behind here. Uh, I'm gonna stay uh, on uh, off the bike here because uh, there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot to unpack. So um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this uh, this moose's nose feature here. Got to get my notes out. So um, again, this feature uh, is known as the moose's nose. Uh, it's also referred sometimes as the devil's elbow. Uh, it's a very very unique feature. Um, Basically, it looks like a moose's nose or it looks like an elbow. It's a pretty sharp bend uh, in the railway grade. So again, the railway's coming west from Thunder Bay, right? And then basically it makes this gigantic loop. So maybe right now what I should do is I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna show you a couple of maps here, okay, or a few maps. So one's kind of a 1920s geologic survey map and you're gonna see it really, really well. And I'll show you a couple more quote unquote modern maps uh, where you'll see the feature. All right, so uh, why was this built? So why was this moose's nose built? Well, essentially uh, what it boiled down to was grades. So this line was the third line built west out of Thunder Bay. So the Canadian Pacific line had been built west uh, back in the 1870s. Then the Canadian Northern line, utilizing part of the old Port Arthur Duluth and Western had been built out of the area in uh, the late 1800s. Okay, so 1899, 1902. Uh, and then they had made sort of a revision to their line back in 1911. And so um, the Grand Trunk Line was the third line. So basically all of the kind of good routes out of the area had been taken up. So the big challenge that they had coming out of the city um, was the fact that the, the land kind of slopes up or, or, or elevates fairly quickly, qu fairly quickly. Um, so again, if I show you that map, okay, so where the line crosses modern Arthur Street, which is just to the south of us here, okay, um, the elevation uh, is, I wrote this down here, 677 feet, but where it crosses the next uh, major road, so there is a highway that was built through this area, um, you know, in more modern times, but where it crosses the next major road, which is Oliver Road, uh, the elevation is 840 feet. So you almost, you have 170 feet of elevation change in a very, very short distance. So the problem is if you're trying to go a direct line with that, you're gonna have a pretty steep grade. Um, and so what they had to do was they basically had to, and, and the, the, the Grand Trunk NTR system had very, very strict, strict stipulations about the, um, uh, about the the gradient on the line everything had to be below one percent so in order for them to get from there to there right to get from you know the spot where it crosses arthur street to oliver road um there was no way that they could do that um you know and and maintain that gradient so they had to build this huge loop to basically give them distance 
to lessen the grade and it's a technique that railways used all the time i know um, a lot of railway lines particularly canadian pacific use that in the, in the mountains of british columbia and so uh, again you end up with this very very interesting feature where the line loops to the east and comes back uh, around and again forms this moose's nose or this devil's elbow and so again it's a uh, it's a pretty interesting feature um, and again just to give you an elevate uh, di ideas of the elevation so the station that's coming up here which is alba station um, depending on the numbers that you use are somewhere between 720 and 750 feet above sea level um, and then the next station which is baird um, which is uh where are we here um so baird's coming up so we're going to be at milepost 8.5 and baird's like at 13. baird's at 920 feet so it's a pretty steep change and i think i wrote this down on here again too much stuff to talk about uh lake superior is at 600 feet right so in a very very short distance um the uh the the elevation has gone up quite substantially Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pause here for a second uh, and then we're going to hop up on the bike and we're going to start making our way to the east uh, and eventually we're going to hook up with, uh, with Alba Station.